Very, very pleased to yield three minutes to uh, a member of our, uh, an incredibly productive member of our committee, a member of the conference committee, the gentlelady from Tennessee, Ms. Black. The gentlelady from Tennessee is recognized for three minutes. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Speaker, what a difference a year makes. Since I came to Congress in 2011, my House Republican colleagues and I, every year, to pass a responsible, timely budget that confronts our runaway spending in Washington. But meanwhile, the Senate Democrats refused to pass a budget during the four of the last five years. That ends now. This year, our new American Congress worked to pass a balanced budget in both the House and the Senate and to then unify our budgets through regular order. I had the distinct privilege of serving on the Budget Conference Committee, and I'm pleased with the final product that we were able to deliver. This will mark the first balanced budget, joint budget resolution since 2002, and we did it without raising taxes. But we didn't stop there. This budget would also erase the President's disastrous health care law, allowing us to start over on reforms that put patients and their doctors in charge, not Washington bureaucrats. And we used a critical reconciliation tool to help to ensure an Obamacare repeal bill that reaches the president's desk so that we can put him on record, forcing him to make a decision and defend that to the American people. Once more, this plan supports the growth of 1.2 million jobs over the next decade, according to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office. Mr. Speaker, as has been said many times before, budgets aren't just a series of numbers. They are a statement of our values. I believe the priorities found in this budget are shared by my constituents and reflect the values that we are all proud, all, that we can all be proud of. I yield back the balance of my time.